Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. I know so many of you guys got a Cricut for Christmas, and um, if you're like me, I started using it right away, but man, there was a huge learning curve, and I spent so much time just uh, <laughs> trying to make a project work, um, I don't know, resetting my expectations, lowering them, lowering them, lowering them because I wanted to do something, but I just couldn't figure out how to do it. And yeah, I didn't want to do YouTube because I didn't even know what to search for. So I have come up with the first five days of owning a Cricut. And it's not, it's going to take you right from the beginning to pushing you right into doing projects. And I promise you, it's just five videos, but it's gonna be everything. It's going to be, I wrote it down, hold on. It's gonna be an overview, which is today. The first day is you have to learn design space and you have to know the basic functions. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Tomorrow, it's gonna to be things you should buy. And it's, I'm gonna, force you to buy some things in bulk because trust me, it's just worth it. So I'm going to take you through everything you need to buy. Blades, mats, vinyls, all that stuff. Then we're going to go, we have to do this. We have to do Inkscape, Font Lab Pad, and Font Cloud. And I'm going to show you how to download certain things like from Defont, like free, where, you, where to get free files also. But the main three, you have to Inkscape, Font Lab Pad, and Font Cloud, okay? So that's going to be day three. Day four is um, how to cut something. So it's going to be just my name or my daughter's name because my name is only two letters. <laughs> but showing you how to do the letters, how to weld them, how to, um, and seeing them in different materials. So we're gonna, I'm gonna cut the same name in cardstock in the same size, cardstock, vinyl, and iron-on vinyl. And to show you like how to, you know, I, I guess even figure out what you wanna do. You may have gotten this because you wanna do party um, decorations or you just wanna do shirts, but you know, just showing you all, kind of the possibilities will kind of open up your mind. Cause I know when I first got my Cricut, my, I asked my friend, well, what materials should, should I buy? She's like, well, it depends on what you want to do. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> I want to know some possibilities so then I can go and buy those things. I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do. All right. Um, there's going to be a machine overview. That's going to be the last one is the machine overview, which is I will show you the blades that I use, how to change the blades, um, how to feed the mat in to avoid errors, um, all that good stuff. So, all right, so today is a general overview of design space because you need it. Um, you can't do anything without design space. So this is this is it, right? So this is a brand new project. There's nothing in there. Um, so let's kind of just start down here. You have templates. I actually hardly ever use templates, but I will show you what that is. So if you were making a t-shirt, you can um, click on baseball t-shirts and it will give you um, a template of how big it is so then you know how big your design should be. Personally, I don't do this because what I would do is if I was doing a t-shirt, I would Google because I never have this memorized. There's too much stuff to memorize. So I would just Google um, vinyl, you know, vinyl sizing for t-shirt and it will say, and it'll give you this chart. For an adult, it should be nine by nine. For a kid, it should be six by six. Uh, totally making up numbers. But you can see why I don't use this template at all. I kind of just start designing and then seeing you know, what my parameters should be. So that's templates. Um, so let's, and over here, this is your right-hand side panel. Because we don't have anything here yet, it looks blank. But anything that is on this canvas is over here in, our, in your layers. So right now, I'm just going to say, hey, I don't wanna see it, so my template is gone. Okay, the next one is projects. So you can search all the projects that are available. They're really cool. At the beginning, I thought, oh, perfect. I want this font, and I want it to look just like this, except I don't want it to say Joy, I want it to say Noel. Well, 
it's a little bit difficult to just do that. But anyway, <laughs> um, these are all the projects that you can search, you know, you can look for, it'll just pop up, or you can even search for things like, I recently did uh, party hats. So you know, like for your birthday, the little cone hats, right? So you can search for these things and there are so many to choose from that are so, you know, so that you can just modify. So I will show you one. So this is one of the ones that I recently did. So let's just click on it. So what happens is when you pick a project, you're picking one project. You, they don't let you combine projects. So if you, you know, if you, if you like two projects, too bad. You're gonna do one and then you're gonna try to recreate what you see on the other one. But anyway, so here is the party hat. You wanna customize it, then it will bring it in. And it will give you the template for the party hat. And if you remember, it said celebrate, right? So now I will show you what it looks like in the panel. So in the panel, what this is, is basically it's going to cut out this shape for you. And I'm assuming we're gonna use cardstock, right? So it's gonna cut out this shape, it's gonna cut out these little holes, it's gonna cut out this perfectly. It is also going to draw. So it's gonna draw the word celebrate. See, it's drawing, it's in pink. Um, so these are your layers. Let's say you don't want that, you just you can either hide it, then it's gone. Um, here at the mat, you know, now it's back. Um, oops, but it didn't. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's going to be projects. You can insert a project and kind of start from there. Um, the next one is images. So if you don't subscribe to Access, so that's a membership through Cricut, um, you, you have thousands, hundreds of thousands of images and fonts available to you and most of them are free. So let me just search, for instance, if you wanted to do butterflies, okay? So you can search for butterfly, and you can see there's 800 results, right? Um, I have access, so anything with the green um, little banner right here with the letter A means that it's free for me, or somehow, I don't know why it says purchase. I hardly purchase anything in design space. But um, these are all your free images, so you can just click on one, let's say you really like this one, and you can insert it. So now it's on your mat, your canvas of what you are trying to design. So let's talk about this butterfly though, because it'll help us figure out um, all the different features here. So again, if you see the layers over here, this is everything that's on our little canvas working board right now, right? So in our butterfly, we have two colors. We have the green layer and the pink layer, and we also have a score. So it's scoring down the middle on both our green layer and our pink layer so that you can fold it easily. So you can see that. If you don't want it to score, you just delete it. So you, when you highlight something, this is what you're on. If I hit the delete key right now, my scoring disappears, okay? This will also tell you that your butterfly right now is grouped together. So if you wanna see the different layers, you can ungroup it. And when you ungroup it, did it ungroup yet? Uh, it takes a second, okay. So um, you can see it ungrouped because here's my green layer and here's my pink layer. So see, I can move this and look, my pink layer has the scoring lines. It's gonna score right down the middle so that you can fold it more easily, okay? So if you have this butterfly, let's say you don't wanna score it at all, okay? So you can just grab this, you can delete this. You have your two butterflies, you wanna change the color. You, you, you don't want pink and green, okay? So the, pink, the green one is currently selected, then I can go and change this to light orange. And this one, I want a dark orange, let's say. It kinda doesn't matter though what color you choose as long as you're consistent. So for instance, this light orange, if in fact I'm actually using gold paper, you don't need to make this as close to gold as possible. I mean, this is fine, right? But if you want other things to be cut in gold, then you need to make sure that they're all this color, okay? That's the only thing. I mean, obviously, when you go to make this on your mat, you can insert whatever color you want. 
it can say gold, but you can put in a black piece of cardstock and it's gonna cut on your black cardstock, right? So it depends on what you feed it. Um, okay, here are some tools, all right? So I know I'm going like crazy giving you so much information, but some of these tools are gonna, some of these features and tools are gonna save you so much time. So you see all these holes? Let's say you didn't want that many holes. You can just go to contour. So we're contouring this current image, right? It's going to pop up here. You can either select on the actual image. So let's say I don't like cutting really small, small details. So I'm clicking on these things. It's a lot harder to select it on here because you can see my mouse is over here, but it's, I'm actually on this one but the one that's highlighted is the one above it. So if I click down on it right now, the one above it got is removed, right? So I'll show you what that looks like now. So I selected three items. So you see how the three are here, but on this side, they're missing because I contoured them out, right? You could also, if you didn't want any holes, you can go back to contour. You can always undo anything, almost anything. <laughs> but um, if you, you can hide all, and look, now it looks like this. So they're two of the same size. You might want that because when you fold it, it's gonna give you the layers and it's gonna be so pretty. It just depends on what you want, right? But easily go back to contour and you could say, show me all. All of my dots will come back, all of my cuts will come back and here you have it, okay? So that's your butterfly. Now you can Let's say you wanna resize this. This is too big, right? It's um, almost eight inches by you know, five inches, but you wanna regroup them, to, you wanna resize them together. What you can do is you can go to arrange. Okay, first grab both butterflies, and you know you grabbed both because they're both highlighted over here, and you're gonna to go to align, and you're gonna center it. So this works just like any Microsoft program. Um, okay, so now they're both together. You can group them at this time. If you group it, then when you resize it, they're being resized together. So a lot of times you're gonna want that. So here's my butterfly. Now, if I go right now, if I resize it, it's going to resize proportionately both your width and your height. Now, if I didn't want that, let's say I want a really fat butterfly, um, I can go to unlock. So now I'm gonna be able to change one length without impacting the other one if I wanted to. So I can make him really short or really thin. So this is just locking and unlocking, right? So you could just undo it. Um, and then you can go back to, so we undid it and then it's catching up to us, sorry. Okay, so it undid the, the, what we just did. I'm gonna grab both butterflies and it's locked again. So you can lock or, or unlock, okay? All right, so this is our butterfly. So that's from images, okay? Now let's say we wanna add a text. So we're doing, I'm gonna get rid of this for now, okay? So I'm gonna just delete it. So let's just say we're doing a butterfly t-shirt. So here's our butterfly, we want our name on there, or mom, okay? So here's my text. So you can go and select your fonts here. You should be able to see what it looks like. You can also see whether or not um, uh, it's free if you have access. Um, and if it's not free, it should tell you how much it is. It normally does tell you how much it is, but it's funny, it's missing right now. Um, some of these are like $5. I don't pay for fonts. I refuse to do that here. <laughs> but let's just say I'm going to pick one of my favorite fonts that I downloaded from another place. Okay, so I want to show you this because it's going to drive you crazy. Um, so these are our script fonts, right? If you use it in any other application, it will connect the letters for you. In Design Space, it does not. So this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be super frustrating because that's not the way it's supposed to look. I'm gonna make it bigger so you can see it, okay? All right, so you can do a couple of things. Um, I use Font Lab Pad and Inkscape if I'm doing a bunch of names, a bunch of words, 
because I'm just showing you one name, it's not a big deal to manually move everything to make them connect, but I do not recommend that if you have more than one name. It would take forever. So um, I'm a room parent. I do a lot of personalizations for the class. Uh, for 23 kids, no way am I moving each one of these letters. <laughs> so I will just type out the name really quickly in Inkscape or Font Lab Pad, which I will show you on another day. Um, and it will make life easier. But let's just say you're doing one, okay? So a lot of people will recommend that you go to letter space and you just decrease it. So you see it's moving closer and closer. And that's okay for some, but if you look at the distance between the H and the A, it's kind of small, we're getting there, right? But look at the distance between the two T's and even the O and the T. It's much bigger than the distance between H and A. So this decreasing the letter space is only going to work for a little while, right? Because look, I'm here and now my H is connected to my A, but my E is not. This is funky. My T is connected up here. It's just horrible, right? So you can ungroup and you can manually move it. I want, when I do a script, I want my R to be connected. So like I will make this R sit right here so that this line goes up like this and over, okay? And then I'm gonna move my L over so now everything's touching where I want it to touch, um, my T. Now a lot of times too, See, like, where do you connect the T, right? I would connect it there, but this is funky up here. So if you use another program, when you have a double T, it will, a lot of times the designer wants it where it's like one big loop like that, which is so much prettier. So anyway, you could do that here. Um, maybe you want the C to connect like up here a little bit. I don't know, but let's move this butterfly out of the way. So I'm gonna change this to a really light color, okay? So that we can see it a little bit better. Let's change it to this color. And hopefully, oh, it's, you know what? It hasn't been doing that lately, but let me, um, let me see if I can zoom in. So the other, to zoom into, you can do this. So we can see it a little bit better. So what's frustrating now is you may not realize it, but, oops, hold on, let me get to the name. Where did it go? Okay. So even though everything's connected, until you weld it, each letter is going to have its own endpoint. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. This O, it's gonna cut out the O, it's gonna cut around here, and if we connected it to the T, it's gonna cut through my T right here. And I wish I could show you, you know, they, um, let me change this color and see if that helps. Because before we could see it in the layers, you could see where it was cutting. Okay, this is better, so you can see this. So, um, you know what, let me make this a different color so you can really see it. Okay, you see how the O, it will cut into your T, and then your T is gonna cut off right here. So even though it's touching right now, this is not the way you want it, right? What you want is you wanna grab all of this and you wanna weld it. So when you weld it, it becomes one item. And actually, I should have shown you one more thing before we did that, so let's undo it for a second. You know each one is separated because look at each letter is its own line item, okay? So I'm, and let me, I'm gonna do every other one a different color so that you can see where it, um, and I'm gonna arrange, send to the front, so you can kinda see what's going on here. Um, let's make this one orange. So you see, especially with the T's, this would be horrible. This T would cut totally into this green T. So this green T would just be jacked. It would have this orange O, this little hook coming in, the T's coming in over here. It would look horrible if you can imagine what that would look like if it cut like this. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab the whole thing and you'll see the difference in your panel over here when you weld it. 
So when you're welding it, think of like welding metal, right? It's now one whole thing. And you can see that because the name Charlotte now is one piece. It's all connected. So if I poured like water, it would just go fluidly into all my letters without stopping. Okay. All right. So that's Charlotte. Um, okay. So let's go over here. Let's see what other features we need to go. So that's text. Um, the other thing that I see a lot for request is let's say you had this butterfly. Let's ungroup this butterfly for a second. Okay, you've had this butterfly, right? And here's your name. Let's bring the name to the front just so that we can see it. And you want the name to cut out of this butterfly. So a couple things I would do. First, I would grab the two items and I would center it, right? So align, you wanna center it horizontally so that the name is right in the middle because you can eye it, but you know, why? When you can do, you can have your, um, your design space, you know, measure it out properly for you. Okay, so now it is centered. So now what you wanna do is, you wanna grab these two items and why is it not letting me slice? That is very weird. Oh, because it still has, no? Why is it attached? What is it attached to? Okay, I'm gonna detach. I don't, you know, honestly, I don't know what it was attached to. It's weird because we got rid of um, the score lines, so this should not say attach. But anyway, just detach it. Um, all right, so we have the name. You can just bring the name back in the front if you want to arrange, send to the front. Because the order that it's in, so right now Charlotte's at the top, that means it's the most top thing. We can always see it on top, and then it's gonna be the orange butterfly. So if I move this butterfly in, it's gonna be in the back. I can't see it, because this is the order of your layers, okay? So you can either pull it up, so you can see I'm moving it, or you can go to arrange and you know move backwards or send to the back, okay? All right, so let's move that butterfly out of the way. We want this name to be cut out of this image, right? So when you want something cut out like that, you're slicing it. So you're gonna grab the two items and you're going to slice. So if slice is grayed out, that means that there's something wrong. Either like before we had something attached, even though there wasn't anything attached, the system still had it attached to something. Um, or you picked up more than two items. You can only slice two items at one time. So in our case, we're slicing the name and the butterfly. But watch, if I move this butterfly kind of in this area, okay? And let's say I'm grabbing this. I still only want the name and the first butterfly. And the second butterfly doesn't even touch my name, right? But my mouse right now is selecting three items, right? So look, slicing is unavailable. It's grayed out. So let's grab these two items and now slicing is available. I'm gonna slice. When you slice, you get slice results. So what happens is you can move out the name. So here is our butterfly now. You might not need this. You might not need the blue anymore, so you could delete it. And here is the butterfly with the name sliced out. So if this was cardstock, everything in the white or, you know, is gonna drop out, right? It's gonna cut out the name from here. If you made a mistake, you can either undo or right now this is an enclosed image within this image. You can go to contour and you could hide all and let we're back to a plain butterfly, right? So contouring is just, you can remove things that are enclosed within an object. So let's go back to contour. We can add everything back and it's easy to add back. You just click show all, everything comes back the way it was at the beginning. Okay, so that's text. Let's look at shapes. So this drove me insane when I first started because sometimes I wanted a rectangle. I could not for the life of me figure out that the rectangle is a square. All you need to do is you need to unlock your square so that now you can move it as a rectangle. <laughs> so that took me quite some time, I have to admit. Um, 
but you can just undo it if you want a square. So, you know, because the square is locked, right? So when I make this bigger, both sides are gonna move out at the same time. So it's a square, duh, all four sides are equal, right? So um, unlock to make a rectangle. Now let's talk about other shapes, right? These are all your basic shapes, but there are way more shapes, right? So now you have to think, how do I get around it? I, I feel like a lot of times with design space, I feel like um, there are constant workarounds. So if I wanted to make, um, I don't know, like a pencil. So if I wanted to make a pencil, I want, I need like a kind of like rounded top for my eraser, right? So I'm gonna bring in a circle and I'm gonna move it over here. I'm going to unlock it because I, I don't want so round. I want kind of a rounded, let's see. So I'm moving my piece. I want it something like this. So I want it a little bit bigger. I don't know, something like this, right? Now, then I'm gonna grab, the, well, first of all, my, my thing is too big. Let's see, this is 1.569 wide, so 1569, so I can go up here, 1.569. And then what I would wanna do is I wanna, I wanna make sure it's centered, right? So I'm gonna grab both items and go to align, and I wanna center horizontally. Then I'm going to weld. I'm welding the two pieces together to give me this like rounded dome and then here's my length of the pencil and then I need a triangle for my tip, right? So here is, I can either do it with a diamond or with a triangle. So let's do the triangle because with the triangle, what I could do is I can rotate this, right? I can either manually rotate it here or I can type up here 180. I prefer to rotate up here because I can never rotate this and get it completely straight. So that's just me. <laughs> I'm gonna make this smaller. I can make this match, right? So again, this is 1.569 wide. So I'm gonna make this 1.569. So everything matches up, right? And then I can grab the two items and go to align and center it horizontally. Then I can scooch this up a little bit so it's touching, right? And then I can weld it or I could bring in the diamond and these, um, let me move this triangle out of the way. So this diamond, if I match it up right here, and I can make this again, 1.569, right? Then I could, oops, just undo, it's glitchy. Okay, then I can grab the two items, oops, grab the two items and align center, right? And then I'm gonna, go and hit this and just hit my up cursor and then I can weld it and then that would be my pencil, right? So um, another popular shape that you might or another popular image that you might, I'm gonna delete this for now, okay, is let's bring in our circles and then I'm gonna duplicate over here, okay. I'm gonna make this one smaller because we're gonna make Mickey. So here's Mickey, let's say I like this. I'm gonna duplicate this exact shape. And then let's say you like it right here, okay? This is what personally what I would do. I'm gonna hit the shift key and I'm gonna grab this circle because I want to align these circles so that they're even. I'm gonna align it center vertically. Then these two are now perfect to each other because I duplicated so they're both the same size and now they're even across, right? I'm gonna group it. Now they move together. Then if I like it right here, I'm gonna now grab that 
hit the shift key on my keyboard, grab my circle, and I'm going to align um, horizontally. So now it's perfectly in the middle, and then I'm gonna weld it. There's my key. So kind of get an idea for like how to manipulate shapes and stuff like that. So that's this, but let's undo this for a second. And let's go and slice this out so that you can see what that would look like. So you can grab these two items, and why is it not letting me slice? Uh, oh, see how it's grayed out? It's because my two circles, see I have three items being picked up. Even though my mouse only picked up these two items, these two circles are grouped together. So it's counting that I'm picking up three items. So what you can do is you can grab this and ungroup it. So now they're individual items, right? And now when I grab these two items, only two items are grabbed and I'm gonna slice just to show you what that looks like. And there it is, it's sliced out. But you have all these slice results. So you can decide, do I need this piece for something or do I just delete it? Um, you know, for whatever reason you need this, I don't know, a planet, I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything right now, but if you wanted to do Pac-Man, for instance, and you wanted a little slice out, something like that, you you know, I use slicing all the time. Um, all right, so that's shapes, text, images, projects, templates. So we, we're almost done over here. Upload. What you're uploading, you may be uploading fonts from another site. You may be uploading images from another site. Um, you may be uploading a screenshot from your phone because you can do t-shirts with someone's face on it. So what you would do is you would go to upload and you can do this from your phone or on your desktop and you upload image. You have to remember where you saved your image, right? So I'm gonna show you one that I did. Um, so let's just save this one. And then, so you select your file, click on open, and this is, I don't even remember when I did this, but anyway, it's an outline of Moana and the name, right? So I'm gonna save it. Then you click on it and you insert. So I'm gonna show you all the images that I've inserted so you can kind of see what, what I'm doing. Names, names because, right, I want it um, sized properly, like this one, all the names are together, or these aren't names, these are colors. I just labeled all my paper. Um, this is an image. These are stars with an outline. This is an outline of the name Charlotte. So it's the name Charlotte plus the outline behind it. Um, this is a, you know, a penguin image that I liked from another site. These are pictures that I put on a t-shirt. So you can kind of see um, these are names that this is my daughter's class. I wanted it on a blanket. So I had them all write their names. So these are all vinyl. HTV, so I'm gonna iron it onto a blanket, which I've already done, but you can kind of see all the things that you can upload into here. Uh, these are icons for my business card that I did. Um, images for a cake topper. Um, so many things that you can upload into the system, okay? So once you upload it, um, it's always available to you in design space, okay? All right, I'm gonna cancel out of here. So we've hit everything on this panel. Up here is pretty easy. This is obviously, you know, reverse. <laughs> Backup, you made a mistake, let's undo what we just did, and then you can also redo if there was something to redo. Okay, line type and fill and color, those all, you have to have something selected, right? So let's say I have this thing selected. Right now it's cut. Um, I could technically put insert a pen and have it draw. It would draw the outline of this. Um, you can pick the color. So this is always the color and the pen. In this case, if you cut, then you can just select any color, HTV, paper, whatever. But there are other options. You can score, which is, you know, kind of like indenting the paper so that you can fold it more easily. You can engrave, but you need all these tools. You can deboss, wave, um, perforate, and then foil if you have foil. Now fill and no fill, that's gonna depend on whether you're doing cut and print or not. So let me upload it. Um, actually, I can do this one. So let's say 
no, I'll just upload, sorry. Let me go into a file that would make more sense. So let's view all. I'm gonna go back to that penguin. So this penguin is print then cut. So it's not layered. I can't decide to um, cut the hat in red vinyl and then cut the penguin in white vinyl, nothing. This is one file, okay, and this is perfect. It came in really big, right? So for my size, I can just change the size so that I can see it. I'm gonna hit five inches, and there we go. So this right here, it's one line item. It's going to, I'm gonna send this to my printer that's connected to my desktop. It's gonna print out this image, and then I'm gonna send it to my Cricut so that it's gonna cut perfectly around this hat, around the little hat, and the penguin shape. So, I mean, it's perfect. It looks like, you know, if you bought a sticker or something. So that's print then cut. So when you do print and cut, then the fill is print. No fill changes it to just blank and it would just cut around this. And you're gonna want that sometimes because if you're doing um, like on a cake topper, you might just want to make this thicker. Um, so you might want just a background like this. All right, so let's go back to print. Um, why is it not going back? Prince, what happened here? Hmm. Let me undo it then. I don't know why it didn't it didn't go back to the penguin, but okay. So here's my penguin. I'm gonna leave a few things here because I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the Make It page once we're done. Okay, select all. It if you click it, it selects everything on my canvas, and you can resize at that point if you wanted to. Um, let's just click out of it. Um, I have this. You can go and you can click edit up here and you can copy, cut, or you could just do it over here. Um, we've been arranging quite a bit already, right? Moving forward or backwards. You can either do it here or you can just pick up this piece and move it over here. So let me, I can move it all the way to the back. So it's behind my butterfly now, or it could be in front of my, on top of my butterfly. So you can see the difference. It's just the layers on this canvas. Um, flip. Flip is nice. So here's my butterfly you can flip. This one we won't be able to tell because it's just flipping back and forth and the butterfly is symmetrical, but I can flip it upside down. Or you could just go and rotate it, right? But that's up to you. Now size, you can either click here to unlock it or you can click, oops, hold on, let me move it so you can see. You can either click here to unlock so that you can change it, make it fatter, skinnier, whatever, or you can click up here to unlock. You can manually type in the width or the height. When it's locked, you type in one, the other one will automatically adjust accordingly. Rotating, we rotated. You can put in anything and it will rotate for you. Now the position feature, a lot of times you will not be using this, but the position feature is just like graphing back when we were in school in math. So your X coordinate is the one running across. So in this case, our butterfly is selected, right? It's saying um, go over 6.29 units and then go down 1.7. It's the beginning of our butterfly. So it's just where are our objects on this grid? Everything has a X and Y coordinate. So like this one, this is saying it starts right here because it goes down to the most left and the most right. So here's our most left point is here, but it's up here because it's our most top point. So in this case, it's saying go over almost eight units and then go down almost two units. And here's the beginning of this little piece. So that's our position feature. You can manually go in here and change it to five and four, let's say. So it's gonna change it to go over five units, go down four units, here's the beginning of our piece. And we're almost done with design space. Okay, so there's a couple more things. So you have your panel here, right? We've already talked about that. You can go to Color Sync. Color Sync lets you, all the colors that are available on the screen right now, you can then just move things over. Oh, I want that to be that color, that to be that color. Or you could just manually select this item and change the color. But this is fast for sometimes like, um, I don't know, 
when I do like 10 butterflies and I want them quickly to change the colors, I would do it here. All right, so let's go back into layers. Um, I mean, obviously duplicate is uh, a no brainer, deleting the file, deleting the image. Um, we talked about slice and weld. So let me grab these two items so that they'll pop up. When you grab two items, you can slice. When you grab more than one item, you can weld. When you attach, so let's talk about attach. When we were scoring earlier, you add the score lines, but if you don't attach it to where you want it to score, when we go to the make it screen, it will just score randomly. So you wanna attach it to something like if you're drawing and then you also wanna cut out that image. Let's say you're cutting and drawing Mickey Mouse, right? So you wanna cut the Mickey Mouse outline, but you want to draw in his eyes, you need to attach those two things so that it will draw and cut on the same image in the right place where you designated. So that's attaching. Flatten. Flatten is really cool. Flatten changes whatever cut file that you have into a print and cut. So that would only look good. Let me flip this over so I can show you what that looks like. So let's flip this back. Um, and we're gonna bring it to the front, arrange, send to the front. So I do, I flatten things when I'm doing labels or stickers. Um, that's when I use it. But let's, okay, first of all, let's get rid of the name Charlotte in the background, okay? So a recap of a couple things. So here's Charlotte, I'm gonna to go to contour, I wanna hide all, I wanna hide all those cutouts. So I have a flat, or just a, full image of the orange, okay? And then um, I'm gonna grab these two items and I'm gonna flatten it. Look how pretty that is, right? So it's gonna print and then it's gonna cut all the way around. So this is cool if I wanted to do a sticker label, like Happy Valentine's Day, love Charlotte for all her treat bags. Um, you can design whatever you want and then it will print and then you can cut it on your Cricut. So that's what flatten is. If you decide, oh, I don't like that shade, you can unflatten it. It will go back to the cut items. So you can see right here, the butterfly, it's still cut and print, but you can now change the color. And then you wanna flatten it together so that it becomes one image. It's gonna have the blue in the front, the orange in the back, and it's gonna cut all the way around the butterfly. All right, I think that is a good lesson of kind of what can I do in here. Um, you wanna save your project, right? So let me save it, save as um, day one tutorial. Okay, and then we're gonna to go to the make it page so you can see everything. So let's, if, for whatever reason we wanted to make this thing let's see what it looks like we're going to go to make it and these are our print and cut so it's going to print out like this don't worry about this black line it's going to print out exactly like this this is your registration mark when you put it into your cricut machine it's the sensors are going to read where the black registration marks are so it knows how much to go in and cut exactly around your image your penguin and your butterfly um, and when you put it down on your mat you want to put it down in this corner exactly the way it's the way it's drawn up here you don't want this flipped upside down where the butterflies over here and the penguins over here because it's not going to cut properly it does not know that you did that all it knows is this is the registration mark the penguin should be in the top left corner and the butterfly should be at the bottom okay our next map here is your triangle here's your orange paper and here is your orange your lighter orange mat now if you decided oh i want to i want to move it my Scrap paper is in the middle of the page. You can move this and it will cut wherever you tell it to cut. So here it will cut in this bottom corner, okay? You could also click on the three dots and say, oh, you know what? I want it to be the same orange as the other orange. I'm gonna move object and it's asking you, where do you wanna move it to? I'm gonna move it to this one and click confirm. And now you have it here. Um, or you can say, oh, you know what? I've already cut that piece. I don't need it. You can click on the three dots and hide select it and it will disappear. 
Um, what else do you need on here? I think that's it for now. Let me know if you have questions. I'm always looking. So um, I try to answer within 24 to 48 hours. Um, and so here you go. I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know what you think. If, there, if you have questions, I will be answering them. And then join me back for day two. All right. Merry Christmas. I'm recording this on Christmas Day. Um, and so enjoy your new machine. And I will see you next time. Thanks.